Are you feeling stuck, lonely, depressed, looking for a lifeline, looking for a way out? I know the feeling all too well. Hi, I'm Karen Katz. Welcome back to my channel, the place where you discover that being an empath is a gift, not a curse. If you're new here, I'm a certified professional life coach, speaker for Fortune 500 companies, and manifestation teacher. I'm also an empath that has broken through the dynamic of codependence, people pleasing, overgiving, and attracting narcissists. And if you want to do the same, start by subscribing to the channel and turning on notifications so that you don't miss one single video that can start shifting things for you powerfully. Today, we're talking about depression and how we can start moving out of it. Let's get right into it. Depression, simply stated, is a disease of hopelessness. As children, we come into this world lit up, passionate, happy, looking to enjoy life, to have fun and play and be who we are at our core. Just be who we are. Cry when we feel like it, kick when we feel like it, eat when we feel like it, do whatever we want. Like my younger one was said to me when he was about one and a half. I was running around the house after him, had to get ready for work, had so much to do, and he just wanted to play. And I'm like, no, Josh, we have to do this and this and this. He looks at me and says, I do what I do, and I don't do what I don't want to do. Best lesson ever. As children, we come with this zest for life, this energy. We are so lit up, ready to play, ready for fun. And as life starts to unfold, we start to get conditioned and molded into being in a way that's not natural for us. That is not who we are. As empaths, and I've talked about this a lot in the channel, we've had our fair share of traumatic experiences. Again, we are sensitive beings, highly sensitive. We have sensitive nervous systems, which means sensitive, not weak, nervous system. So any situation that felt like an overload to our sensitive nervous system created a traumatic experience if we didn't have the support to work through it, to understand it, to process it. We were left alone at four, five, six years of age to tend to an emotional wound. Just because it's not visible, we wouldn't have been asked to tend to a deep cut or a broken bone on our own at that age. But we were left to tend to that emotional wound on our own and we didn't have the tools. We ha didn't have the support only because it wasn't visible, but it hurt as much as the actual physical pain. There's research done where they put MRI scanners on the brains of different people and had them recall a, a moment of rejection and the same part of the brain lit up as the part of the brain that experiences pain. So the pain is real for us. It is not made up. And if we didn't have the support to work through it, we, it created a traumatic experience. On top of that, we were shamed for being the way we were. We were shamed for being too sensitive. We were told to get over it as if it's something that is wrong with us. So we got to the conclusion that there's something broken in us, that we don't deserve love, that we're not good enough. Isn't that naturally going to turn off the light with which we came, that bright light, that desire to be all of who we are to share ourselves with the world to play and be careless we start to be self-conscious we start it slowly starts to erode our sense of self our self-esteem our self-worth if there was actual trauma because in many cases we've experienced real big trauma as empaths abuse physical mental emotional verbal sexual 
if there was trauma in addition to that, there is a whole layer that's even deeper, which eroded even more our sense of self, our self-esteem, our self-worth. Then we're left in the state of feeling worthless, valueless, unable to share our light, unable to share ourselves with the world, not knowing what we can share or not, because fear of rejection becomes the first filter from which we need to protect. So everything is run through that filter. Am I going to be rejected? So am I being who I am and I'm, am I free to express who I am? No, if I feel broken and wrong and not good enough, I'm going to hide myself. Slowly turning this natural creative energy that's within us because as empaths, we are highly creative, slowly turning this creative energy inward we're trying to hold it back we are trying to repress it and what does it do energy does not get created or destroyed it transforms so what does it do it turns on itself it goes back inward and it turns into self-hatred self-loathing we don't like ourselves we turn against ourselves which puts us in this state of absolute hopelessness, thinking, what's the point? What's the point of life? Is any of it worth it? I know the place all too well for years, for years. Here's the thing. I have a lot of clients saying they hear they should be more grateful for the things they have in their lives, or they should practice more gratitude, or they should um, do this, or they should try that. In that space, what we need to understand is that gratitude is way too far away from it. There are different levels of energy through which the energy moves in order to reach that state of gratitude. If you're not familiar with the levels of energy, make sure to check out the link in the description where I created a free training for you so you can understand it in detail. Gratitude is way too far away. So what's closer? And here's the problem. The next step from hopelessness, from powerlessness, is anger. The problem is that for empaths, we are terrified of conflict, terrified. We have not been modeled healthy anger. Anger is a natural human emotion and we haven't been modeled healthy anger. So we don't know that healthy anger even exists we don't know that somebody can be mad and it's actually a way to assert boundaries because they're saying this is not acceptable this is acceptable but this is not acceptable and the way they're saying it can be calm can have no insults can have no name calling doesn't have to be raising their voice or hitting but we're not used to that I wasn't used to that at all. Anger meant a monster waking up, hitting everything that he could find, hitting people, destroying things. It was terrifying. But you know what? We can learn. We can learn that there is healthy anger and it needs to be expressed. Because if we repress it, it turns against ourselves, which keeps us stuck longer in the state of depression, which, by the way, it's just a state. The same way there's a state of depression, there's a state of joy, there's a state of gratitude, there's a state of, hope, a state of hopefulness, and we can shift between these states, again, the details I share with you in the free training that I've included below in the description, where you can see how different levels of energy represent different states within us. We've just practiced a lot the state of hopelessness, the state of depression. We've been stuck in it for so long that it created an addiction. These emotions created, they release chemicals in our body, which created an addiction to being there. And so it's a little bit hard or a lot to move out of it because it's like starting something new, right? Starting to start going to the gym right we don't have the momentum going so it's really really hard to start the key is understanding that the natural flow of the energy the next step is anger it is not 
gratitude or appreciation or joy. <laughs> it is anger and it is okay to be angry is a natural, healthy human emotion. We just need to learn to express it in a healthy way and understand the benefits of it. We need to understand that it also allows us to express our boundaries. This is acceptable. This is not acceptable. And we need to start getting comfortable being in this state of anger in your own unique way, in a way that expresses genuinely who you are. I can get angry and not insult anyone and just simply stay, I'm angry right now. I'm going to take a few minutes to process what I need to process and we can have a discussion after. I know it's not the right time to speak because I might say things that I'm going to regret, but I can still allow myself to be angry. And like I used to teach my kids, because I read a lot about this when they were young, they needed to express it. So finding healthy ways to express it, ripping paper, grabbing a pillow and hitting a pillow against the bed, right? Being able to process these emotions and allowing them to be okay to be felt and expressed in you. It is possible to move out of this state. My love, I know it feels extremely hard, extremely heavy, but the way out, if you believe in your angels, spirit guides, they're calling God, the universe, whatever you call it, they're calling you. The call, some people confuse it with, it sounds like harps. It doesn't. It can sound like come into the state of anger because this is how we move out of it. And we slowly get closer to the joy and the peace and the gratitude and the love that you want. But we need to pass through the state. And if you want to understand that deeper, go ahead and check out the free training that I've prepared for you and I've linked below. If you found this video helpful, let me know by giving it a thumbs up and sharing this information with empaths that need to know and understand this. Please take good care of yourselves. I will talk to you soon. Namaste.